What's up everybody, Michael here. We are doing something a little bit different today. I am actually going to be sort of giving my own tips and tricks on sort of how to get into deck building as well as just general tips that can hopefully improve on your deck building. Because doing the Deck Tech Doctor series as well as just browsing through MTG subreddit and the MGT deck building subreddit, I find whenever I help someone, I find I'm saying the same things over and over. You know, it's usually generally the same problems. And I think many people, especially newer players, of course, getting into deck building don't have a good foundation to start with. And so this, I wanted to make this series to hopefully help people get into deck building, you know, newer players, whatever, or, or just hopefully people who are just starting deck building. Hopefully this can sort of help you sort of refine your process as well as refine your deck building experience. That is my main goal with this. And, you know, it is catered towards the newer players. But, you know, if you pick up something else from it and you're 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 an older player, then that that's awesome as well. Oop. Don't want that there. So I got this idea just randomly. Uh, I thought it'd be a fun thing to do. Now, this is episode one called having to start somewhere. You know, we all have to start somewhere, uh, especially deck building. You always have to start somewhere as well. And episode I'm going to probably break it up to three different episodes. Uh, the second episode, I'm going to be talking more about general deck building tips, uh, tips and tricks, just how you can refine your deck, things like that. And hopefully uh, it can help you guys out with everything else. And then episode three, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different where I'm going to be taking you guys through my own thought process. So taking taking you guys sort of through everything that I do whenever I come up with an idea from start to finish, I will build a deck uh, with you guys and I will just start with an idea start with a goal and work my way up there I will then show you how I refine my deck what I'm what my thought process is throughout the whole the whole thing as well and then I'll finalize it with going on MTGO buying the cards and then play testing it for you guys and seeing you know where we can what we can do after you know where it can go from there and that's and I'll just show you generally what goes on in my head and that'll give you a better sort of visual uh, example of what what goes on and how you can sort of do things. And maybe you can get take something away for, uh, to help with your own deck building. And that is my goal for this. And I hope I definitely help a lot of you newer players. And I definitely, you know, if, if you're an older player and you pick up something else, because um, your, you know, deck building may, may not be your strong point, it is extremely overwhelming, and extremely hard to do. Uh, so I, I hope, uh, these videos help you with that. Now these are these are general videos and these are sort of basic videos so don't expect any ad super advanced things you know don't expect a whole ton of math or or anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm no mathematician and I'm not one to nitpick on those types of things. This is, this is just to sort of at least build a foundation because that's what I feel most people getting to deck building miss is the foundation of things. So you know having the right number of lands uh, the balance between creatures and non-creature spells, having a goal even is something that people just forget. Uh, yeah, just balancing your numbers out. That things like that. That is that is what I'm going for. And ooh, someone's slamming the door. And so that's why I uh, am not going to go into anything major. But we will get going with this, and we will get started. These are going to be uh, not extremely long videos, I hope. But you know, I am an in-depth uh, explainer. I, I like to explain things quite a bit just so everyone gets the right idea from it. And this will be no different. And hopefully it will it will be fine. Hopefully it won't be too long. But uh, yeah, yeah, grab a drink, pause the video, and let's get to it. So episode one, have to start somewhere. So step one with this is whenever you like, this is going from the very, very beginning. So even before you even have your cards or anything like that, start with the basics. So have an idea. Uh, this can come from any anything really, uh, whether it be synergy between cards, a certain combo that you saw on the, online, and you sort of want to make your own deck around it. Um, any mechanics that you see that you find interesting. Uh, this is deck building towards standard, but I mean, uh, for your for your own, you know, I'm actually just going to get rid of that because it really doesn't matter. Uh, the examples I say are probably going to be from standard cards, but you know, if you're building casual decks or kitchen table magic, and you just want to sort of improve your deck building experience, then it doesn't really matter. You know, you can use mechanics from other sets and things like that. 
but you know an example would be the x start mechanic i i fell in love with a while ago and i, I definitely want to still try and make that mechanic work it's a very fun mechanic when it actually gets going and it can definitely definitely hurt over the long term game so i definitely definitely want to try build a deck around that one and uh you can combine you can you can combine these things so you know synergy between cards synergy between mechanics even uh, one of the ideas I had a long time ago was Archangel of Thune and the extort mechanic. So it would have a, a lot of extort triggers that would give me really low costing ways to get multiple life gain triggers off, which would in turn turn into multiple 1 1 counters for my guys because every time I gain life, Archangel of Thune triggers and gives 1 1 counters to all my creatures. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing, and I, and I definitely want to try and get off with that idea, but uh, Archangel of Things are a little bit expensive for me right now, so mm, that will probably have to wait, and I definitely that is definitely a card that's key to the deck, so it's not like I can replace it with anything. Um, the last one, you can sort of just do a particular card you like. Uh, one of the examples of that one for me is, is it my Is It's Elementals deck. I I've, I've came across the Niv Major's Elemental card, and I thought it was a really cool creature that you could sort of exile instants and sorcery spells you can control to sort of make your guy really really big, and that deck is really really fun to play. And it's it's a, it's a it can be a fun beat down deck uh, when you have like turn three you have a five six Niv Major's Elemental, which is awesome and something they have to deal with, and so yeah start with an idea it, it can be a very generic idea or it can be very very specific you know something you saw online and you just you just sort of want to put your own twist on it or it can be just the cards you enjoy playing uh if you if you notice if you see a card that you really really like try and make a deck around that it's it's much better picking a card than and trying to build around it trying to make a deck as a foundation of that rather than just sort of look at your collection and throw random cards together because that's what I find many people do is they just sort of have their cards as a collection. They just pick, you know, one card out of everything and just throw a whole bunch of random cards around that and hopefully, hopefully it works type of deal. So I really want people to learn structure and really learn the foundation because I think that's what people miss are missing the most, especially those newer players. And there's also a more is a more generic way you can go this, or you can find a goal or a strategy. So, oops, didn't really mean to highlight that. Not really finding a goal or a strategy exactly, but it is more having a statement for your deck. So, I guess this wouldn't be really or; it's more like end. Uh, so have an idea and find a good statement for your deck. So once you figure out what your idea is try to work that into a strategy so one example of this is the most sort of general thing you can go is let's let's get let's take aggro for example let's take the aggro deck for example the a general goal statement for your deck for an aggro deck is could be something like i like the quick cards from the boros guild i'll use them to bring my opponent's life from 20 to 0 asap so that is pretty much aggro in a nutshell bringing your opponent's life from 20 to 0 and that is a great place to start I find a lot of newer players start with something like this, but they don't get more specific, and you really need to get more specific to actually figure out what cards you need. So then you can move into something more specific, such as using the aggressive synergy of Boros cards includes some fast 1 and 2 drops to move into a stronger wave of 3 and 4 drops, and possibly with Battalion, and attack whenever I can without losing too much board state, have supplementary cards to protect my guys, such as Boros, Charm, and Brave the Elements, to win trades, or possibly use Brave to swing through for the win. Using burns such as War Leader's Helix, Skullcrack, Lightning Strike, and Mizium Orders, I can finish off my opponent or remove threats that I can't allow on the board. So as you can use, as you can see, it's much more specific, and it already has some sort of core cards that your deck will need. And then from there, you can sort of work your way and use uh, use more filler and try and really pick those creature cards that you really like using and throw them into the deck. Sorry for the pauses. I'm just taking a drink in between. So that is step one, is just find an idea and then m develop a, a statement or a goal for your deck. You And also, just to add on to this, I didn't make a bullet point of it, but I just r realized it now. One thing I also noticed is a lot of players try and fit multiple goals within a deck, and this can be a good idea and cannot be a good idea. You generally, I would say don't want at most two different goals in your deck and they should be goals that still fit with each other 
you you know you don't want um uh you don't want to have a life gain deck when you're building an aggro deck you know because you're generally not caring about your life total when you're playing an aggro deck you want to build more threats and if you're throwing in cards that are ga gaining you life you're generally generally slowing down your board state so you're 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 not going to be able to have a very efficient aggro deck so that is what i mean you don't want a you don't want conflicting goals and b you don't want too many goals because they'll get jumbled up and you just won't get to any of them it's better to find one or two goals that work well together as well as they're, they're you can just really focus on it and it's a really efficient goal and so this means that you're you're really going to have to do a little bit of reading as well uh you know if, one thing is that you can't be ignorant of the fact that there are just objectively good decks out there i am a rogue deck builder and this is sort of trying to get more people into rogue deck building but at the same time you have to realize that there you know those top tier decks are at the top tier for a reason and knowing how they're built knowing why they're built in the way they are it can just overall help your own deck building process so that is another thing that i should add to this sort of guide is read up on things and you know pay attention to the top tier decks and not you don't have to you know examine them for hours and hours on end but definitely take a glance over at them and you know you can it, it definitely gives you a good sort of structure to use as well uh, if your deck seems sort of similar to them it, you can grab some ideas and stuff like that and sort of just mold it into your own form um so yeah uh, fi uh, develop an idea and then f develop a goal or a statement for your deck and then step two you have to gather your tools of destruction so this would be building a card base. So this doesn't mean going out and buying the cards right away. As well as I should note, buying singles is your best and most efficient way, as well as your cheap, as well as the cheapest way to get your cards for your deck. Once you actually have your deck, it is cheaper to go out and buy singles rather than buying booster packs. You're buying booster packs for the feeling of opening boosters, and just for a little fun if you're planning on drafting or something like that otherwise stick with singles it's it's much cheaper and much more efficient and it's not hard at all uh, many many online sites you can buy singles from as well as i'm sure your local game store has singles so there's a few different methods you can sort of b build your card base now this is again this doesn't mean going out and buying your cards this is sort of crafting your deck before you actually go and buy the cards so well, the one, the main reason what I do is I generally go to something like gatherer.wizards.com when I have an idea and I want to build around it. I generally go to this site, and this site allows you to sort of search through cards from sets, you know, specific sets or specific blocks, as well as specific colors. You know, do you want just to look at creatures, enchantments? It allows you to filter a ton of things, and it's very, very easy to just sort of browse through the list and pick out all the cards you need uh, and then you can just sort of write them down or something like that or put them into a site like tappedout.net and just sort of go from there i'll just actually uh, bring up the site for you guys just so you guys if for those of you for those of you who haven't seen what gatherer.wizards.com is i will show you right here so this is gatherer.wizards.com and this is the site that i use to sort of browse through things there's a lot of different sites like this but this is the one i use and it's very very easy to use so um you can search you can search specific cards in the search bar and you can search them by name type or just random text inside of it as well so if you wanted to find example something all the cards with populate or all the cards with extort you could just type extort in the search bar as well as check off this text box and it would show up all of those but then you can also filter uh card color and what i usually do let's take that boros uh example that i used up here so this boros guild example let's say i'm this aggro player and i want to start developing a boros aggro deck i can Ooh, let me get the right site I can go red and white because those are the Boros Guild colors, and then I can exclude unselected colors, so it'll only bring up cards that are white and red, and they won't it won't include any other cards, regardless of if they're multicolor. It won't include green, black, or blue. And then from there, you can go to filter card format. So this is generally generally going to be standard. So you can switch over to the Return to Ravnica 
Return to Ravnica block. So it'll include everything, you know, Gate Crash, Dragon's Maze, and Return to Ravnica. And then you can sort of un uncheck that, and then you can sort of go to the set part, and you can look at the Magic 2014 core set or the Theros set because uh, Theros isn't filled out yet. So that is how you can do that. And then all you need to do is just hit the search bar. You don't have to type anything in because you're just searching for the colors. And then once once you click that, it'll bring up every single card in from in the Return to Ravnica block that is that is red or white or both. It will not will not include any other color um, other than you know fused cards. Fused cards that are a little bit different because they're regarded as only one card, but that's pretty much the only exception. So as you can see, only red and white, as well as Boros Guild colors in the multicolored cards when you need them. So from here you can just browse through and then pick every single card that is applicable to your goal or your strategy. It does don't do not pay attention to the 60 card limit. Um, well, there isn't a 60 card limit, but you should stick to six. Si you should si stick to 60 cards. Wow, I really butchered that sentence. <laughs> but uh, I'll get more into that in the next episode. That'll be more uh, tips and tricks and specific things on the deck building process. But uh, you know, I can get like a couple of Blaze Commandos, and then uh, you go to the next page. You know, maybe grab a Blind Obedience and maybe get grab the bomber corpse for a battalion you know that's just an example of what i do is just browse through everything grab every single card that you think is going to be applicable to your deck and then go from there i figure it's a lot easier just starting really big and then refining down rather than just looking at all this all these overwhelming cards and then trying to build a deck from that because there are so many cards out there and this way is just a little bit easier in my opinion and just allows you to get a better look at things so that is gatherer.wizards.com, and so definitely check that out if you want to sort of browse through cards or and sort of grab an idea. Maybe you don't even have an idea yet, and this is a good way you can just sort of browse cards, and, fit, and if something catches your eye, you can you know try it out and try and build something around it. Uh, method two would be event or intro deck refining. So how this works is, uh, this one isn't so much building a card base rather than just sort of ha having something to jump into right away. So Wizards has pre-built decks that are called event or intro decks and uh, the event decks are going to be a little bit stronger and more catered towards friday night magic type tournaments and then intro decks are a little bit easier and a little bit uh quicker to get into and less things to worry about but from there you can just from there you have a, a full 60 you know 75 card deck and then you can just jump in right away and start playing this is for people who don't really want to do so much deck building process but it still allows you to customize things because from there you can refine it and from there you can just grab singles and make it more your own so you know you can take one of the pre-built decks and then say oh i i would like to add some more life gain to this deck just for fun and to try and work around that maybe it'll maybe it'll help the deck out a little bit so you can grab some life gain cards and switch out cards you don't need and then put those life gain cards and so from there this is how you build a this is a little bit quicker way of building a card base and sort of getting right more like right into the game a little bit faster. So this is better for people who just want to want to jump in and play right away and learn the game through that rather than starting from nothing and going from there because it is a very overwhelming thing is starting from nothing and trying to build a deck is extremely overwhelming and very very hard to do if you're if you don't know anything about the game yet. So I would definitely recommend this to newer players. It's a little bit easier. And then the third method is for people who maybe are newer, but and they have bought some cards, but not necessarily has got anything going, and they just sort of threw their own cards together and hopefully ha hopefully play that as a deck. That general generally won't work; it won't be an efficient deck. So this is where this sort of comes in. So you can refine your own homebrew from the collection you have lying around. So it's definitely a good place to start. Is looking through your collection first and foremost and seeing do I have any cards that I can build a deck around, or do I at least have cards that can go towards my deck because again you don't if you're if you're on a budget and you and you want to buy your deck and buy those singles you you know there's no reason to buy extra copies if you don't if you already have some lying around at home so definitely look through your collection and see if you can sort of build a sort of a small foundation from there and then buy your singles after the fact you know once you filled in all the loopholes and you just have a much better visual rep representation 
of your deck. And so that's where step three comes in. So step three is input all that information into something like tappedout.net or mtgdeckbuilder.com. I'm sure there's a couple of different other different sites, but I personally use tappedout.net. It's just a really, really easy site to use. And you know, it has a playtest feature. It shows your draw percentages, things like that. So, I mean, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff, but it gives you a nice visual representation. In my opinion, it's a little bit better than mtgdeckbuilder.com. But I will pull this up for you guys as well. So tappedout.net. So once you got all your cards, uh, you know, once you have your idea, once you've looked through gatherer.wizards.com or some similar site like that, once you've got your whole list of cards, you can input them into tappedout.net and it'll give you sort of a visual visual representation of your deck and how the mana curve looks like, what the draws will look like, uh, what percentage of X color you have compared to you know your other color if you're playing more than one color. Uh, things like that so it's a really really good way to sort of get a nice look at your deck before you actually go out and purchase the cards because it's 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 not a good feeling purchasing those cards figuring out finding out they don't work after you play test them and then having to buy more cards so especially if you're on a budget this is a definitely one way i would recommend um it's, it's a little bit it's not as bad if you sort of want to build your collection up but otherwise i definitely would rather just sort of theory craft a deck on tappedout.net and then get advice from other people uh, refine it a little bit on there until it, until it gets to a point where you can actually feel like you can play test it and get something out of it and then go from there. So this is tappedout.net and you do have to make uh, make an account to actually develop your decks but it, it's worth it. So then you'll click on the t deck builder part and then you can just add add MTG deck and then you can put the name of your deck, what format it's going to be for, uh, the description of your deck, so what strategies, what what's your, like this is where you should put your goal, that goal that you thought up earlier, this is where it should go in, and it'll give other people that are looking at your deck a better way of helping you as well. And then your featured card, commander if you're playing EDH, and then you have your main board, sideboard, your maybe board, and your acquire board. So it's a very, very easy way to do things, and all you need to do is let's say I want to I'm going through the list on gatherer.wizards.com and I look, oh, I want to include Boros Chimes. So let's include four Borop Chimes, not Borop Chimes. Four Boros Chimes. That's all you need to do. And then you can save that. You know, once you keep typing everything in, you know, I want two of these cards uh, and I want three of these cards. You know, this is all you need to do for this. And then after you're done inputting all that information and you can also develop your sideboard uh, at the same time if you want and then also cards you're maybe considering for the deck so you can sort of keep it separate from your main board and your sideboard so it's, so it's not su super cluttered and then you can also put things in your acquire board um, so this is nice after you you know if you already have a small collection of cards you can put you can put the cards that you still need into the acquire board and you can sort of keep track and tick off you know okay I just bought a couple of these so I can tick this off I bought a couple of these I took I can tick this off etc etc so after you're done all this you can save it sorry I need to take another drink here so from there you can save it and then you can save it to a folder you can organize things through that um, so like he does these are all the decks I've made so far you know of course I've deleted a ton of them a lot of them are sort of failed decks but We'll just take my green red Evo Agro deck, you know, my really, my favorite deck that I've made so far. And this is what it'll look like when it's done. So it'll separate your things into creatures, lands, instant sorcerers, enchantments, etc., etc., you know, and it'll include your sideboard on the side. And it'll also give you sort of an uh, easy way to sort of configure things. Once you've picked the cards you need, you can adjust the count right on here. You don't even have to go back to the edit screen. So as you can see, when I highlight over things, it comes up with this plus or minus sign. So let's say... I, I don't need too many bur burning tree emissaries. I'm going to knock the count down a bit. So as you can see, the number goes down, and you can adjust things from there. But, uh, of course, I do want four of them. And then, you know, I'll have the uh, description, which I actually need to update this one. Uh, speaking of updates, it allows you to add updates. So if you want to add something, um, you know, what you've changed the deck or something like that, you can put it here, and it'll come up and have sort of like a timeline of, you know, the evolution of your deck, which is really, really cool. It allows a place for commenting if you need to, and it allows for other people to comment on your deck as well if you have it publicly shown. On the right is the more technical information. When you're starting out, you don't necessarily need to pay attention to this, but it's a good thing to sort of get into the habit of. 
it, it gives you a nice visual representation of sort of the split between colors, um, how many symbols of those colors are in each deck. It de definitely helps in configuring your mana and things like that. Um, you know, land compared to creatures, compared to sorceries and instances, such as, you know, etc., etc. And also your mana curve. This is the, probably one of the more important little sections that you need to pay attention to. So it allows you to sort of see the curve of your deck and see how many two drops you're running, three drops, four drops, uh, things like that. Uh, one cool thing is it also shows you the price. So it shows you um, from TCGPlayer.com. It shows you sort of the average, low, and the high price that these, you know, the the whole deck costs in total, every single card. So you know, to build this deck on average, it's going to cost about eighty nine dollars, which is quite cheap. And you know, on the high scale, it's going to be one hundred ninety two. But most people do not use the high scale. I generally generally see people use the average pricing. And I don't believe they include sideboard for that. Um, sideboard also is not included in the card count so as you can see I have 60 cards here which is what you should be aiming for you should not have more and you can't have less so 60 cards is what your deck should be plus a 15 card sideboard which you can see here so it it doesn't count the 15 card sideboard in the 60 card count so just be wary of that It'll, it also just shows extra information such as when you last updated it when it was added uh, what formats it's legal in uh, just uh, not, not really needed stuff one cool thing is it allows you, there's a checkout button here as well. So if you actually do use 2cgplayer.com, I personally don't because I don't think it ships to my area. But it allows you to actually just ch click the checkout button. It'll throw everything that you've selected in here into your buy cart and you can just purchase your whole deck right then and there. But again, I would not advise that until you're for sure this is the type of deck you want. And I would probably just stick to actually buying singles anyways because it allows you a little bit to leave a little bit more room for configuration. Um, I mean, you are buying singles, but I mean, like, I would probably allow more room for playtesting and refining before you actually purchase it. So don't jump the gun on that. Um, definitely get some advice from other people on how you can improve your deck first, and then go from there. Other cool features you can do on uh, tap.net is, uh, and you see this button that says playtest. It allows you to see the draws of your deck. So this is what I really like. This is what I use. This is a very nice for aggro decks as well because it, it, you can see how fast your deck can go and how fast you can get your opponent's life from 20 to 0 as well as it's just a nice see, nice thing to see your your draws and how your land land is working out and things like that uh, if this will actually load there we go so as you, can see, as you can see it just drew me a hand uh, just like you normally would uh, this is a terrible starting hand so you can even you know see how your deck mulligans and this is an awful hand as well, so I will keep mulliganing. And this is not a great hand, but let's say we're on the draw, we can at least Burning Tree into Sylvan Carried or into Gorehouse Chainwalker. So it allows you to play cards on the field, just like you normally would. It'll, in the bottom right, you can see next turn. So you can see in the top right, it keeps track of your turns. So it keeps all, track of a lot of different information and allows you to sort of adjust things. So as you can see, we did draw a land, so we can t Stomping Ground. Uh, it doesn't keep track of your own life, so you can sort of keep track of that on the side if you want to see how susceptible you are to aggro decks or something like that. And you know you can play Burning Tree into Sylvan Carried. It keeps track of the power and toughness, as well as you can as well as if you have to add counters or something, you can adjust the power and toughness levels from there and sort of put counters on it or just adjust its power and toughness straight from there. And you can restart it whenever you want. You can do this as many times, and it's completely free. So this is a nice way to see your draws and see how your deck runs, sort of just as a goldfish standpoint. So that is tappedout.net. Definitely use this tool, and it is definitely the key to sort of your deck building uh, skills, I would say. And that is that. So that that is how you can get started. That is a great way to start, and I think that's definitely that is the hardest part in actually getting into deck building is just starting somewhere. And hopefully this video helped you. This is just um, sort of the basic way to start and it gives you sort of an idea of how you can get going with this. And it allows you to not have to actually go out and pay money yet. So all these things are free. You, you don't have all well, other than an event intro deck refinery, of course, but that is still only about 15 or $20. And you know, you can come up with your idea, find your goal of your strategy, right? And, Go to gatherer.wizards.com, pick out all the cards you need or all the cards that you want, uh, put them into tapped you know, refine your deck from there, and then uh, I would probably add as a bullet point, go to, uh, you know, the Reddit MTG uh, subreddit or just any other MTG Salvation forum 
and get advice from people you know per, you know show them the link to your deck on tapped or mtgdeckbuilder.com and ask for advice because from there you can get some advice on how you can refine your deck while still keeping it sort of at its core foundation and then you can go about go out and buy your cards and it, it allows you to sort of get into deck building and work on your deck building without having to actually go purchase anything which is nice um if you're like me and you don't have a ton of money uh, this is definitely how I do things, rather than just going out and buying booster boxes and random cards here and there. Uh, because you definitely, a lot of people are on a budget, and you know, magic isn't a very, very, very expensive hobby. So it, it is, it is nice to actually be able to do this stuff without actually having to pay money. When we get into more complicated stuff, you might have to spend a little bit of extra money here and there, but we'll get to that when we come to it. So this is the first episode. This is all you need to sort of get started. This is all this episode was about, is just getting you started, getting you going, and hopefully you can get at least come up with a sort of foundation for your deck. Uh, the second episode will be more talking about what to do with that deck now. Uh, it'll talk about more in refining that deck, general tips and tricks what sort of rules you should follow when building your deck and refining it as well as just anything in general in the deck build the actual sort of refining process of the deck which is definitely one of the most important parts and then episode three we will probably do a sort of thought process thing of my own as i mentioned before and i'm sure that will be very very fun so this video has gone long enough i definitely hope you guys got something out of it and you know uh, again, as per usual with all the videos I make, uh, for those of you who are watching and definitely want to help out other players as well and get getting into deck building, definitely leave a comment and definitely leave your own thoughts. What things do you do? Uh, what other tips do you have in getting started? And that would be awesome. So because I definitely, definitely can't say them all on this video, so it's nice f to get other people's views and other people's tips and tricks from their own experiences, because this is generally from my own experience, and this is sort of how I do things. But, you know, everyone's different, and uh, I think deck building is very varied between people as well. So, again, thank you guys for watching, and I definitely hope you guys have a great day.